Good morning. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for March 3rd of 2023. Well, welcome to uh, welcome to almost spring here in the Northern Hemisphere. All right, so um, we will begin today with dropping into the heart space. So just closing your eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Imagine that within the earth, there is the heart of the earth, this giant crystal sun connecting heart to heart with that energy of the earth and breathing in that crisp, clean, transformative, supporting, grounding energy of the earth into the heart and into every cell of the body, grounding yourself completely with the earth energetically. And we do that in a breath as the breath is important. And the next breath is we take that connection from within our heart to source, soul, creator, God, however you see that. Breathing in that light, expanding that light, your light within the heart and throughout the body. The third breath in this Trinity breath is breathing in the energy of both earth and of creation. Bring both of those together within you. And you allow those lights to connect to each other. So you are the grounding point between earth and in the heavens and that moves you into the heart space which is why we do that so as you from the head to here good morning everybody marcia d from the north carolina coast oh my goodness i was just out in raleigh last weekend mount desert island maine hey valerie from colorado renard from dc today Hey, Samson and Matthias from Minnesota. Hey, with a little snow symbol there. <laughs> um, yeah, we got Boston, California, Texas. And yeah, we got quite a people on quite a few people on today live. So appreciate you all joining us. Um, so with uh, 50 questions Friday, basically, if you are here live, please do drop your questions here on the questions tab. Um, the chat side is a great place to connect with others that are here. And hey, Rachel from the Ozarks. Gosh, I was just in the Ozarks last week too. <laughs> Drove through there. Quite the long road trip. Um, so anyway, if you are watching by YouTube, you are welcome to join us live. Just sign up for the newsletter at twistedsage.com and we'll send you the event links when they're live um we might not be here for a couple of weeks now um next weekend is an event in colorado and the following weekend i think is an event in colorado um so anyway we got some more people from northern cali crescent beach bc and fort worth hey bright bryson from fort worth dallas fort worth right on um let me silence my phone here and we'll just go ahead and I let me see if I have any questions from email. Uh, nope, that one was a spam. Okay, I don't think I have any questions um, from email. So if you do have questions again, please drop them over here in your questions in the questions tab. Hey, Jody from South Dakota. <laughs> and nice that you're here, neighbor. Um, so let's see, I guess some announcements. Um, as of today, March 3rd, we still have the Elementals on sale. Um, the Elementals set came through, the whole thing was completed about 11 years ago. Um, so we're doing our 11 year anniversary. And of course, the Hedica was the first one that came through. So Hedica has been around a little bit longer than that, a couple years longer. But Anyway, we just wanted to celebrate that 11 years of having all those elemental symbols. Um, and, you know, the elementals are, everybody always asks, well, what do you do with the elementals? And basically, the Hedica is really a great one. Well, for example, 
any of the elementals you can carry on your person. Now, like with Chiselle, the fire elemental, when I first carried that and wore that as a necklace, it brought up so much anxiety. I always tell the story about how I was teaching a Merkaba class and I had to walk out of the class because I was just so high anxiety. And I called my sister Brenda. I was like, hey, what's going on? And she's like, oh, man. She's like, take the Hedica, the water elemental, and wipe yourself down. Because basically, Chiselle, the fire elemental, began to bring up. It started to stir up all those emotions. And this is before I was, you know, doing my release work and so that just sell if you have stuff that's just right there on the surface is going to set it on fire and just bring it up so that you can let it go and again you can use that hedica to just energetically wipe it off because you're just bringing the energy of water so basically with the elementals you can work with them in that way such as plymella the wind uh wind and again plymella is not it's an energy mover it doesn't move just air it moves fire ether water so that's a good one to also have on the body um just as it's an energy mover but really the other way to connect with these elemental symbols is you're actually you know connecting with the spirit the the energetics the consciousness of that elemental such as the consciousness of water now i think most of us can agree that water has a consciousness and um so anyway that's you know working with the elementals it's basically about connecting with them and from there you can simply ask them to step in and and assist you know we used to always use the the wind elemental to try to calm down the <laughs> the, the wind plymella um you know things like that so kind of your imagination is the limit on working with the elementals and always from the heart space of course <clears throat> and so let's see any other um updates gosh uh we'll probably continue to drop our our um we have a sale going on on all of our clearance stuff and and i think over the weekend i'm going to drop that some more we're going to go through clearance stuff here today and see what we have left so that we can start getting that out the door because we're really preparing to you know simplify everything with the website the studio the products we offer the descriptions um you know 2023 to us is really about simplifying um, because simplicity really is the key to um, consciousness, to a lot of things, simplicity. All right, we have some questions here on the questions tab, so we'll start with questions. JR, what is the best way to use the Wings of Talk pendant to clear the whole house of want, unwanted entities? How do you know which ones are pleasant or neutral? <clears throat> So with, <clears throat> pardon me, with the wings of talk. <clears throat> oh, you guys like my cool necklace. I got it this weekend. Um, it's rose quartz. I guess you can't really see the pink in it. I'm going to take that off. It's a little heavy. Um, so with the wings of talk, we really do want to rewrite our product description because at the time that the wings of talk were created, they were created for clearing entities on the planet. The thing is, is that we are in an entirely different world at this very moment. Um, as of about 2020, we went through a huge transformational shift on the planet and, and elsewhere. And basically, for eons, we have had outside influence interferences all the all the stuff um you know and it was on a soul level it's it's all agreed upon but on on this level what was happening was we had all these entities on the planet um and they were either either just in that higher density form you know kind of like an angelic being is here um or other aspects of you are here they are in a different dimensional space but then a lot of these entities too were very influential with people um you know that that was the work that we did when we first started twisted sage was that's what this was all about the creation of the tools was to help clearing 
all of these energies, consciousness, and and everything else that was not in the highest and best for us anymore. And as of about two years ago, these entities that were just free roaming, willy nilly, playing on the planet, fun and games to them, they're no longer able to be here. And so as all of these entities have cleared off the planet, um, very rarely in the past two to three years have we seen an actual entity that is not, you know, that is a consciousness that is outside of you. What we are seeing anymore is, is that these outside energies that appear foreign and sometimes dense are actually aspects of us, an incarnation, an aspect, a soul aspect that is coming back around. Because right here and now, um, you know, we are in such an important time in humanity, the earth and all of creation. Um, for us here as, as the here now human, basically, we are bringing in everything, everything that the soul is, is lining up with us. We are in such a pivotal point, such an important point in all creation right now. And we are kind of a focal point of that here. And so basically what that means is that we have all these parts and pieces of us that are coming in for integration. They're bringing in all of their traumas, dramas, projections, unfinished business. And basically as they're bringing that in, that can be influential. We can also witness them as, as something that <clears throat> we feel is outside of us. Um, good, bad, ugly, beautiful, otherwise. And so the wings of talk is still able because it is still holding that wisdom field and these wisdom tools that we created here um, about a year and a half ago, the wisdom tools are the ones that are helping us to integrate all of this stuff. And so don't think that of that as a scary thing of, Oh, there's this big dark entity and no, you know, I, I, I don't want to integrate that. What happens, especially, you know, with the wings of talk in the field of all these wisdom tools, the alchemist and wisdom tools, is, is that it's kind of like when we started to cross over ghosts waywards with the golden fire energetics. So the golden fire generators were one that would cross over a ghost or a wayward. And how it did that is that disincarnate beating being the ghost. Um, would come into the field of that golden fire. Now these golden fire tools are holding the energetics to um, to basically connect to connect the heart of the being. It doesn't matter if you're here in the physical or a, a ghost wayward, but the heart of the being to the heart of their soul. Basically, it is bringing them back into soul, and that's what the golden fire energetics was doing with the ghosts, the waywards. And of course, that golden fire is also put into the wisdom. So basically what happens now with these, with these beings, whether they are, let's say they're not an entity that they are an aspect of your soul. Cause again, very rarely in the past three years, maybe 1% at the most, we've seen that they are an outside consciousness that we're seeing that all these things that are coming up are an aspect of the soul. So within these wisdom fields and with this wings of talk, it is simply inviting them into the field because you're not inviting in all of their crap and their traumas and in their, in their denseness and their projections. You are simply inviting them into that field of the wisdom of that wings of talk for them to connect with the soul. doesn't matter if it's your soul or maybe they're another soul. But basically you're inviting them into that space for their soul to come in, which is always your soul, you know, 99% of the time right now for their soul to come in and basically do that integration work, which is just the, the healing, clearing release. Basically it brings them out of your awareness and integrates them in with soul. And so again, it's not bringing in all of the junk because all the junk that we accumulate through these lifetimes of experience comes in as wisdom, light, and consciousness. So when we start to bring in all of those old lifetimes of tenseness of the things that we did and everything else, we bring that in and that becomes wisdom for us 
basically you shine brighter by bringing in any of those old dense traumas, energies, etc. So working with the wings of talk, um, and the wings of talk does create about a, um, a 200 foot wide area. Now the wings of talk pendant is, it's a little bit of a smaller field. It's more of a personal field, but really it still covers the entire home that field does. And basically, um, it's just being in the heart space and just asking your soul your light, your consciousness to take care of that being that you witnessed. So if you see that being, um, or you feel that energy, you just feel that there's something out there. You just go into the heart space and say, okay, I allow my light to do what it does. You're not there to direct it or to fix it or anything. You're just simply there to have your divine awareness, your attention from the heart, onto this being or this energy and allow either your light or using the tools and allowing those tools to also their field to go out and to harmonize and work with those beings. So that's, so how do you know which ones are pleasant or neutral was the other part of the question. And basically we, we really try not to anymore even mess with any of them, whether they seem good, bad, or otherwise, because that's still a judgment and they're still walking around in their state of consciousness. So once they are integrated in with soul, then that is a part of wisdom in a part of your field. So then you don't need to communicate directly with any beings or any aspects of you because they become a part of the bigger you. So I hope we're not getting too woo woo for some of you guys here because, um, you know, that's really, if you are interested in these tools for EMF protection or just, you know, your ears drawn to them, but you're not really into any of this other stuff. Um, I feel like you're on the path to working with this other stuff, but we're simply making these fields and, and also the earth is shifting so much to where, most of this is going to take place automatically beyond our awareness. Um, so yeah, the doing is simply just being and connecting with your light. Uh, Linda, I just started reading sun sunshine before the dawn. I've been drawn to place the beta coil on the book while reading. What are your thoughts? <sighs> That feels really good. Gives me goosebumps. So basically, you know, I've, I've always felt that you can receive the, the wisdom from these books by simply placing them in that field and being in that same field. So basically you place your, you know, your book or, um, I don't have a beta coil on me, but basically you just simply place your book with the coil. Um, and, and just be with it and be in that same field as that and just simply have your intention of receiving that that wisdom that information and you know the thing too is is that it's not a mental thing it's not like oh well i can all of a sudden remember page 43 in the third paragraph it's more about bringing through the concept the energy the the wisdom of that um and so yeah i i think that's a fantastic idea to utilize the tools with, with your reading material. Um, you know, and it's the same as if you are creating something, you know, we make, um, the alchemist tab, which you put onto your computer or your phone, anything that you are composing, creating music, writing, drawing, because the energy, um, that, that, that energy of your consciousness of, of your heart based consciousness, comes through your creation then. Um, so the, the, the tools, the tensor fields can work both ways with that receiving and creating that information. I received a uh, next question and I'm probably not going to pronounce your name correctly. Swetha. Um, I received my energetic transformation kit yesterday. I am new to tensor technology. I had placed the Wi-Fi ring around a one liter bottle yesterday around five or 6 PM. 
Right adjacent to it, I had a five liter glass bottle, which was full and closed. Today, around 8 a.m., the five liter bottle just blew. Could the tensor ring on the adjacent bottle have increased the spin rate in the water to the five liter bottle that expanded and blew up? Um, no. So basically with, um, when you're working with the tensor rings in water, where they create only a column of light, only the water that is within this column is going to be worked on. But unless two, so let's say you have a, you know, a five gallon jug of water and you have the ring under that five gallon jug or a 20 gallon jug of water, the ring energetics will still work with all the water because it is communicating with each other within that vessel. But if you have a ring here and not one here, this will not be affected by the energetics here because again, this ring is just creating a column of light. And if these two waters aren't touching, communicating each other directly, it will not affect this one. Unless that's something that you had your intention with. Um, because your intentions can move energy so much with these tools. Um, but no, I don't feel that it was mm, anything connected. Uh, yeah, I can't, I, I, there might be a connection there, but I'm not, I'm not seeing what that is. Um, but in theory, um, this should not affect anything that's around it in theory. Uh, Linda, can you use the halo on an infant? What, ex what effects can I expect? So the, the halos, um, yes, you know, you can totally use these tools with infants. And this is truly the reason that I started getting into energy work when my daughter was born was because, um, you know, she was having night terrors and I had found an energy tool called the Omega wand that I could run energy and it would scatter all the, the ghosts out of our house because we lived in an old 1880s brothel. And so there was tons of ghosts here and in this whole little town, this little Midwest town that we live in, um, old West town, I should say. And, um, so it was, um, yeah, my daughter that really got me into the tools and, and no, you can never get too much of these fields because these fields, again, the, the tools that we create are, um, they're self-regulating in that you can never get too much of anything in here. That's why you never receive, you know, your physical, mental, emotional detoxes. Now, yeah, maybe you're emotional, but it, <laughs> it's a beneficial thing and it's doing it with more grace and ease than it would have. But, um, this does not lead to those detoxes or anything. So they are very gentle, um, yet powerful. And so they are perfectly fine for infants. So I made my first tensor ring. I think when my daughter was just a few months old, she was just a baby baby. And, um, and so she has been exposed to them constantly and consistently ever since um throughout her whole life and but what effects can you expect um you know with with infants it's going to it's just going to help them it's going to help them more because a lot of these infants you know babies especially are still connected and they can see through all of you know, they can see more than we can see. They're still connected beyond that veil. And that's why they see ghosts and wayward so easily. Um, so having the halo with an infant is, is great. And it's going to be an individual thing, of course, on what to expect and what to happen. But just like with anybody, it should bring that more calmness, peace of mind, um, and especially for infants who are more sensitive to the energies. Um, Marie, how long does it take a column of, <clears throat> how long does a column of light last? Does it matter what type of light, just pure light, golden fire, a primary color? So we actually have an entire website dedicated to light anchoring, um, and several videos. So, Basically, 
when you create just a column of light with your intention, visualization, imagination, and intention from the heart space, you visualize a column of light coming from you know, source, however you say that, coming down into the earth and going back up. So basically you are creating basically the Trinity breath of light over a specific um, space, place, or a thing. Now, when you do it this way, that light column will only last for eight days unless you put your attention onto it because you have to have a witness for that light column to stay there, which is why we do all the attunements and activations on, you know, working with the golden light rod, working with the sacred heart of the golden fire, um, all of that, that we can then put into these light columns, which will then last indefinitely or for as long as they are needed. So really, um, you can create your own light, light columns and have your own flavors and intentions within that light column. Um, and it'll do great things. It, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Um, and just follow your guidance and intuition. Just follow your intuition, you know, when you're in the heart space on how you want that to look. But again, if you really want to get into these light columns, that'll cross over ghost waywards, that'll restructure electromagnetics that you can use to hijack um, cell phone towers to, um, to then um, send out the frequency of love and gratitude in that cell phone tower. Then using our the version that we teach for light anchoring, such as the YouTube video called Light Anchoring 3.0. Also on Twisted Sage under resources, you will find more information on light anchoring. So um, using the tools is really a powerful way to create these columns of light that are bringing through energies very similar to all the tools we create. Again, these are training wheels. They are meant to empower you. But yeah, um, Marie just totally follow your own guidance if you want to create your own flavors and that's it too is if you use our version like the light anchoring 3.0 you can still add in all of your own intentions energetics different light rays whatever you wish into that column hey matthias is the starburst within the wings of talk the same that's found in the new key pendant. Um, so no, the key pendant and the wings of talk are still, uh, they're still connected to a different energy. Um, so the, the new key pendant, moon talk, the key, um, it, gosh, I'm not wearing anything today. Oh my goodness. Um, the, uh, the key pendant, which I usually wear, it's, it's more connected into the wisdom energetic field, which is why it's, why it's a little bit of a newer energy, that newer key pendant. Um, but the wings of talk is, is a whole different energetic that is, um, they both start with the same base energy, but then each is, is goes from there. So it, at the core, they are a very similar energetic, but then they each, continue out with their own different flavors and i might have pronounced your name too wrong too so my apologies on that i am the worst with name pronunciations um so yeah my apologies if i pronounce anybody's name not correctly um stephanie will any of the wisdom tools be upgraded as the new energy comes in you know I really don't know where we're going with the energetics of the tools until it gets here because, um, you know, you've heard me talking about how towards the end of March that there's just going to be an opening to, to a whole new mm -hmm. potentials of creation, basically. And with that, we feel like there are some beautiful new tools coming in or new spaces. So basically the tools are simply the, these different sacred spaces with these different potentials in them. And with all the new potentials that are coming in here towards the end of the month, um, we feel like we're gonna be able to really create some powerful new fields within these tools. And from there, I really don't know where we're going to go with, with the energetics, if we'll keep the wisdom or if they'll shift into the new. 
And I'm assuming that we're still going to keep a lot of our older energies like the balance and harmony, the golden fire. Um, but that too may change. So really don't know where we are going forward from here with the energetics of the tools as of yet. Uh, Renard, I have experience with my soul and its name. Ooh, ooh, wow, I feel that. The presence is overwhelming. You're right. How can I use the new key pendant to best work with it? Oh, be in a space of deep allowing and receiving and surrender. That is how to best work with the soul. The soul, oh man, the one time that I've been around when my sister Brenda truly channeled in her soul, I was just like, I was in awe. I mean, I've never felt anything like that, and she has not either. It's just flipping amazing. Now, usually we we connect with our higher selves, and um, you know, which is kind of a it's an aspect of your soul because your soul itself is it doesn't the soul itself doesn't usually speak in words, um, and it certainly doesn't tell you what to do or give you guidance. That is not the soul. The soul is just it is. I am, I exist. That's all the soul is. And the soul does not care which direction you take your life because it is all about experience. Now your higher self or the master creator you, which is what we're doing this class on right now, soul alchemy, this is about stepping into that master creator you, which is simply a facet of the soul. Um, but really working with the, the, the soul, <laughs> which I feel you are, Renard. Um, it's just about being in that energy, in that space, in that space of allowing, that space of receiving. And from there, it's not really any kind of, you know, communication flow that we perceive here. It's, it's a different communication flow. It is the wisdom. It's the, the understanding. So it's just all about being open, allowing. And congratulations, man. That's really phenomenal. That's where we want to be. And where you go from there, it's just being in the space with the soul and allowing. Wow. Nice work. Uh, Nika, Gaia, Hedica, and Pele have been popping in a lot this last week when I'm playing with energy. Is there a major shift going on to raise the vibe of the elements that surround the permeate that surround and permeate us? So there is major shifts going on right now. Um, we're seeing that, you know, because the consciousness has been raising on this planet so fast, you know, consciousness has just been expanding and growing within each of us and the collective. And that has led to the ability for us now to step out of what we've been in for eons since the beginning. We, we came here to have these experiences, to have experience as soul growth learning, to bring into wisdom, Part of the expansion of creation is is experience and wisdom and and creation but we truly are getting ready to step into a whole different paradigm of of the purpose for creation because the purpose for creation has traditionally been here in this universe for um experience expansion growth and we're stepping into a time that we are just stepping in as creators, conscious creators for creation's sake. And yes, the entire, everything is changing and shifting all over the planet. So working with, um, with Gaia, the earth and Hedica and the water elemental Pele that, whew, beautiful being from Lemuria, Hawaii. Um, it is phenomenal to start working with those beings right now, as well as like the elementals. So the elementals that we have right now are also a great one to step in and work with in this same way. And again, it's just um, 
being in the heart and simply being in that space again that that soft space that space of allowing of not um you know <clears throat> of just being soft and gentle and staying in the heart is really the huge thing. Cause then you don't get taken into different rabbit holes and wanting to push energy and wanting to judge and change things on the planet, stuff like that. When you're in your heart, you are more grounded into a much higher perspective. And when you're in these higher perspectives, you're not caught in everything down here. The drama is in the details. So the more you can step up in perspective and have your divine awareness there, the more you can harmonize the drama and the details. Um, sorry, soapbox thing there. <laughs> um, let's see. Swetha. Gosh, I'm trying. And I did pronounce your name correctly the first time. I hope I pronounce it correctly this time. Um, the ring didn't stay flat on the bottle. It was slightly slanted with a column. It'd still be within the bottle. There was another five liter bottle on the other side that didn't break. And yeah, because we were talking about having that Wi-Fi ring sitting on the bottle. Um, and, you know, I've never... No, the, the spin rate should not affect like the, the pressure in the bottle for that expansion. Um, so basically when you put this, a sealed bottle within the tensor fields and you let it sit there, it doesn't create pressure within that bottle. Um, so I'm not sure what the factor is. I feel like there is still some factor that was in play there, but I am not seeing what that is. And that's definitely not um, anything that we, that we ever see or have, have heard feedback from or seen ourselves is, is um, that pressurized within a volume of water when it's within a ring. So i um, not really sure. Um, I'm thinking of getting the infinity heart pendant to make a birth necklace for my unborn child. Is it okay to do that? Will it offer me EMF protection in addition to other things described on the website? It's the smallest and flattest pendant I could find. Yes. Yeah, so the, any of these tools that, that you have, um, they, they, they are good for, good for you and for, and for the baby. Um, you know, and I was going to go down another rabbit hole about how babies carry their Merkaba field, which then protects their mother as well. If she doesn't have an active and functioning Merkaba field, because these babies that are in your belly, they have a working field, which basically creates this larger field and it restructures electromagnetics. I mean, it just raises frequency and vibration. So actually having that baby is, is, is a really benefit to you in that the field that is, um, that is shared there, but having that, um, pendant, you know, the infinity pendant is a great one because it is connecting heart to heart, your heart with the heart of the earth and the heart of creation and with the heart of your little one. I mean, like it's not connected already, but I mean, having that infinity is not going to do anything negative whatsoever with, with you and your little one. Um, and they do hold that that higher space. Um, Linda, I'm leaving on a cruise. What tools will be best to take to benefit all on the ship? Uh, it depends on what tools you have, but if you have the new energy Gaia sphere, oh my goodness, I love the Gaia spheres because the Gaia spheres are, especially in this new energy, which is AKA wisdom. Um, but the wisdom or new energy Gaia sphere is probably Mm, the tool I suggest for taking anywhere. I mean, I take mine everywhere with me. And um, not only is this creating that field that is doing everything such as the divine I am tensor field generator, which is basically allowing a person to release and clear everything permanently and completely with grace and ease. Um, and it is also, again, uh, connecting hearts of everybody and helping everybody ground and connect and um and the clearing work of course because you know all the clearing that takes place is 
you know, these carry the same energetics as such as the golden fire and such, which all of these energies are helping people release um, and release any of the crap that they carry that <laughs> can mm, cause disresonance within everybody else around them. Um, but yeah, Linda, I would say, you know, a, either a tensor field generator or a Gaia sphere. And again, um, the tensor field generators, we also have that two and a half inch wisdom generator, which is, it's a fairly, um, physically, it's a fairly sturdy piece that you can carry in your luggage. Um, the reason I like the Gaia spheres is because whenever I go to any place with water, I always take the Gaia sphere into the water. Mine that I have at home is super patinaed because I take it to all the hot springs that I go to because not only is it raising the frequency and vibration of the water, but it's clearing the energetics of the water of everybody's stuff because when people jump in hot tubs and things are releasing and this just clears it. So, um, those are the two things I would suggest. I mean, in either or is either a generator or a Gaia sphere because they create a field for the environment for everybody that is within that space. Let's see, I am on this journey on enriching my water. I've been introduced to new tools to enrich my water within two weeks. Three tools have broken around me. I don't know the meaning. I'm currently pregnant and have a stillbirth in the past. These sort of shocking breaks make me anxious. So, you know, the the simplest and the simplest and best way to work with your water. So the reason that these tools are so profound and so safe is that they are working with you, your consciousness. They are like smart tools. They're not like frequency emitters or, or things that do not have a consciousness to them. So most tools and things that are going to work with the water are going to be working with the physical aspect of the water and restructuring and, you know, maybe use an electrical current. Just there's, there's different ways you can work with the water. The simplest way truly is a single tensor ring um, if you need a tool. But truly beyond that, it is you from the heart and you connecting and working with the, wa with the water. This simply creates that column of energy, that space that can assist with that. Um, but the tensor rings in water is rather profound because not only is it doing all that physical work of restructuring, balancing pH, but it is all about bringing the consciousness of the water back into the physical, kind of like humans is, is that's what these tools are assisting with is bringing more of us into the present physical, same with the water. Um, so, you know, using, using a simple tensor ring and just sitting with the water from your heart, you can do some amazing things because even if you have that Wi-Fi ring, it's, it's, it's carrying the same potentials as the water ring, let's say, for working with your water, the Wi-Fi ring is, because you can simply put that ring on your bottle, and then you can easily communicate with the water, asking it to carry whatever the beneficial energetics are carried within the ring, such as all the plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms of the planet. This is the frequencies, vibration, and consciousness of them. So when you set this around your water, you can simply ask your water to co-create with all of these other energies to bring you what is in your highest and best good. And there you have it. And then just let it sit for three hours or less. And um, you're complete. So simplicity and, um, and again, the, the fields that these tools put out are always beneficial to all life forms, to all consciousness. Um, even when we're trying to clear a virus or to push away pests in commercial agriculture, we are still working in the highest and best for all concerned. Um, So a question about, um, and this is just a continue on question about the things that have been breaking and, and issues around when working with water. Why is this happening when I'm doing everything with a positive intention to create more harmony, protection, better health for the family? How do I work with my new divine I am generator for this issue? 
Okay. I'm glad you have a divine I am generator. So basically, um, hmm. It all stems down to that we are such powerful creators. And right now, as we step in, it's so important to be in the heart space when you're setting your intentions. Um, because, because kind of like um, when we're in our head and we're going to say, okay, I need protection especially when you're in your head and you're in and you have a little bit of fear and anxiety about anything and you're saying protection that simply creates that simply creates that 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 scenario i mean that amplifies the scenario that there is even something that you need protection from because truly as we start to step into our own light in our own power we realize that everything is energy and energy is here to serve us but the thing is is that energy has always been here to serve us in the old ways for the old soul growth and learning the old experiences the traumas the everything but we're stepping into a new way and so with that divine i am tensor field generator it is about releasing and letting go of the need for protection in the first place um it gets kind of deep because that's actually what we're doing this this course on right now soul alchemy it's a six-week course and it's basically um you know as most energy healers and workers that are trying to help people release things um the release and the clearing and everything can take place instantly as soon as you as the human are in that heart space and have the allowing and 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 also the choice in the clearing because so what i'm saying is so much of all of our old creations are still coming in and affecting us and that's really where you know being in that heart space sitting with your light making a choice so heart space choice if there's something in your life that you are experiencing that you feel no longer serves you from the heart you simply say i am complete with this i choose to no longer participate in this creation and then you let it go you don't go back and try to look at it and see if it's gone yet anytime you put your attention and awareness onto something you're trying to let go of you're simply holding it so it's about trusting and knowing that you are that powerful creator and that when you are in your heart in alignment with you as soul as the master creator being and you make your choice to no longer participate in those old old creations everything starts to happen all that you are lines up with you to bring in that new creation and you know for the past few years that's what we've been doing as we step into this whole new paradigm of you know conscious creation we have to go through first and clear up we have to let go and release of all of the stuff that we've created in the past that's still holding us anchored into the past so really right now it's all about going into the heart knowing that you are so divinely protected guarded and and i don't like using the word protection but really when you are your light is untainted and untaintable you are untouchable as the human when you are in your heart and in alignment with you and then from there it's just letting go just making the choice saying okay i release this i let it go so with that with that um tensor field generator that you have that divine i am sit with it in the heart and just sit with it and and that will help you better connect into the heart and just help better hold the space for you and just simply say okay i'm complete with that process but then letting it go and allowing it to go what i mean by allowing it to go is not being like well maybe there's something there serving me or whatever then you're just pulling the whole thing back in um 
So it's, you know, this whole process of awakening has been a process for many people, but really it's about between the tools that we create in this new time that we're in and the, the understanding from a mental perspective of what's really going on around us, we can shift through all these things with such beauty, grace, and ease right now. Um, not like the path that many of us have had getting to here, which is, you know, the awakening process can be a really tough path. Um, it can be, but it doesn't have to be. And so, um, being in the heart, being soft and allowing with your light, your soul is the, the biggest thing you could do because then you're not doing anything because the doing is connected to old creation. Anyway, getting on my soapbox again i'll jump off of there holy smokes we got like 30 chats on here have not been staying connected with the chats uh, that triangle piece actually so there's this man i need to get his name and his information because he makes onks and things but he made this and we did a exchange this last weekend um I don't know. It's it's a pretty cool piece. Like I say, it's it was a thing that another gentleman made. But this here, this collar ring is the um, the collar rings that we have on our clearance page. I love the collar rings, and as soon as um, we're going to actually have more collar rings coming through here too soon, it might be actually on our prototype page where you find the collar rings. Um, Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, um, that's made the comments over here, man. I would say totally jump into our soul alchemy class because, um, there's some pretty cool concepts that we're playing with there and, and ways to step into, you know, that, step out of stuff and into something new. So really that soul alchemy class is really might, might be a great one um, for you to check into Karen, if you have it. Um, oh, somebody from Kazakhstan. Oh, thank you. Saying the products are magical. I appreciate that from Kazakhstan. Um, let's see. A uh, question here. Um, are any of the products magnetized? No, um, the tensor fields actually will restructure electromagnetics. So they'll take a discordant electromagnetic field and they'll harmonize that to be a um, smooth flowing, expansive, um, harmonized field, which then that harmonized field is, it's, it's beneficial. It's, it's harmonized. Um, because everything is electromagnetic. Our entire universe is everything's electromagnetic. That's what creates all of reality. So um, there's discordant electromagnetics, which can, you know, cause issues with somebody who's not standing in their light and in their power. Um, what's the mechanism? Basically, how they work. Um, Oh, we have a lot of information out there about the tensor rings on, on the website too. Um, gosh, we have articles written and everything and a lot of the basics, but, um, and that's on our website on twistedsage.com and up at the top, it says, what's in a tensor ring. That's a place to go. Um, but basically it's based on sacred measurements, the way the wires twisted, um, where the ends come together, creating a vortex counter rotating vortex. And that creates, the, and then when they're cut to the hundred thousandths of a centimeter, very specific measurement, when the ends are brought together, it is then creating a working tensor ring, a tensor field. Then within that tensor field, we have um, Twisted Sage Studios and, well, well, I have created these higher dimensional aspects of these tools for lifetimes. Basically, within the, the higher dimensional form of these tools, you can find the frequencies and properties of all the crystals, minerals, plants, water, all the earth elementals, um, all of that is 
accessible within these fields. But this field does not just emit all these frequencies in consciousness because it is a smart ring in that whoever is within their field, it is working with their consciousness, their higher self, their soul. And it is their higher self or soul that, de well, their higher self that determines what is in your highest and best good. So these rings only bring through the energetics, what is in the highest and best good for you as determined by you. Um, let's see. Just reading comments through here. Um, Awesome. Yeah, thank you. And just reading the comments. I suppose I could read them out loud for all of you who are not here live, but no, you probably better just join live if you want to check out the comments. Um, there's a lot of great folks on here. Oh, so the question was about um, for the infinite and the in infinity that, you know, so you can, you can, um, I don't know if I would put a necklace on an infant. Um, to me, that uh, you know, I don't know. That's, but having the tools anywhere near. So basically, you can have a small ring or even a practitioner ring that is, as someone mentioned here on chat, that is under the crib or on the headboard of the wall. So we all sleep with these larger practitioner rings that hang on a wall. So like, let's say this is a, like a 23 inch ring or whatever, and you hang it on the wall so that you are sleeping within this column of light. So this is you in the bed horizontally and this column goes straight through you. Or you can put it underneath so that when you're sleeping, the column of light goes through you in a particular place. But as long as that column of light is connecting anywhere, it can be on your big toe and still affect your entire body. That's why like wearing a finger ring or a pendant is beneficial for your whole body and not just that part and piece that is connected to. So I would, I would almost stray away. From, well, I mean, that's, that's up to you. I just, for me, I just kind of cringed when I thought of a necklace cause I have a 12 year old daughter that I, you know, I changed every one of her diapers. I cared for her all the time. And, um, you know, and I always tried to figure out ways to have tools around her. And one thing too is, um, don't allow your kiddos to chew on copper rings for teething because you can actually get too much copper. It can be actually be rather detrimental if you, um, for, for an infant to chew on copper because you can get too much copper orally and, um, which isn't a good thing. But, you know, you can have copper on you and your body is going to only allow how much copper you need because your skin is a smart organ. Um, but anyway, I would certainly suggest with working with um, with having an infant not to have something directly on them um, when that that's totally up to you. But what we find easiest working with kids up until they start to want to wear pendants or bracelets um, is just to simply either have a tensor field generator or a Gaia sphere, one of the spheres in their area um, or else having the rings so that they are going through their, their sleeping space. All right. Looks like I got one more question. Which dimension is the etheric you is the etheric you guys create your tools? Uh, I don't know. Um, because I don't, uh, the whole concept of dimensions, I'm really not certain about because um, the way they talk about the third dimension and fifth dimension and things like that are, I don't think they're really, it's not really like that. I really don't feel it's like that. And so, you know, but then again, Jeanette Crowley, who we've been working with for years, um, she has spent the last 36 years mapping out dimensions of consciousness, which are not connected to anything on the physical, like let's say this physical vibration is here. So usually when I talk about, 
you know, those layers, let's say third dimension, I'll say third density, because it is a certain vibration that is within this physical where there's another vibration that is in a higher vibration that's not perceived by us. And within here, you're like, oh, well, those are higher, high vibration beings. Well, eh, no, but they're not high consciousness beings because, mm, yeah, anyway. Um, so I could not tell you exactly where in the multiverse our third tools are housed but i can tell you that they are under a dome and a pyramid and heimdall our guardian of the third templates who's an arcturian he is he is there he is the guardian of the third templates to ensure that none of the tools that you ever touch are ever touched by another consciousness that has ill intent because back in the day 2020 prior was that there were other people that I met on the planet, like only two other people that had a three templates to their tools, but they were hijacked. And so basically there was other consciousness that came in to their higher dimensional etheric templates, which then connect to all of their tools. And so I picked up one of these tools once at a holistic fair and I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, it feels really good. And it draws you in. And then all of a sudden it's consciousness, stealing consciousness was not good and that's because of those templates so you know ours are very very well guarded and um but i couldn't tell you where in the multiverse they exist um all right well i suppose um let's see how does how do the tools affect the subconscious? Um, I'm not sure because I'm not. Mm, I guess I'm. They affect the the ego um, because they help to start to release the old programs and structures and traumas that have been in this old structure of the ego that that you know expands through lifetimes. Um, so couldn't really answer how that affects the subconscious. What happens in the cells? Well, let's see. We've seen since, you know, kind of the beginning for the past probably 12 years of these tools that these tools have been working on the DNA. They We've seen that they actually go through the DNA of the person and they scrub the DNA. Um, there, we see like these little black specks and things on the DNA that it just simply clears away. And then as we progress and we work with like the floor plates, the flower of life floor plates and such, we're seeing that those come through and they repattern your DNA. They're doing quantum DNA activations. I mean, they are, they're bringing our DNA online, which is what is happening anyway, but it is bringing it through with a lot more quickness, grace, and ease. And it is changing the physical bodies. Oh my goodness. There, there's, 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 there's changes going on in our bodies. Um, so what's happening in the cells, it's, it's pretty spectacular. Um, it's of what's happening in the bodies, but you know, it's simply, it's not in just the tools that are doing that. It is your light that is doing that. And so these tools help to bring in your light more into the physical, mental, and emotional, and into your entire creation. So the, that's, that's really how it affects the, the subconscious and the cells is it's bringing your light in bringing in your light more than what we have ever carried in human incarnation right now, especially using these tools, especially allowing in your light. I mean, we are carrying more light than we've ever, ever, ever have. Again, everything is coming into center right here and now. Um, so this is an important time to just be in the heart, just be in the heart, just to allow, allow your light to come in and allow your light to just be a part of everything that you are, your entire creation. And, and soon, it just changes. It changes your creation. It changes the reality. Um, okay, one more question here. Valerie, what do you suggest to help with healing? I recently fractured my elbow and I've healed quite a bit using my higher self, but I would like to accelerate the process if possible. Um, you know, Valerie, the, my favorite tool is still the wisdom wand. Um, I love the wisdom on because if you're looking for a tool to kind of work, you know, like I would say more in the physical instead of, you know, doing that work of expanding 
connecting, expanding, allowing, which, um, you know, if you, if you still want to work at it, you know, hmm, the wisdom one is, is always a phenomenal one. Um, but that kind of, you know, that kind of brings up the whole gray line of continuing working on something versus doing it once and truly releasing and letting go. Because again, as we release and let go, um, that is when everything starts to come back into, you know, balance. Um, and, and, um, if we keep fighting at it, then we hold it in place. Um, and, uh, so, you know, Valerie, I, I still do love the wisdom one. I, I, I love the wisdom one because it's something that you can run the energy in and it's here tangible physically on the physical. It's raising the frequency and vibration. You're bringing in your divine light with that. And so really the wisdom one is it's, it is a doing thing because you are actively doing, but it is also that higher fields because it is bringing in more light and it is clearing whatever the, the the reason for that for for this to be Whew, there you go so that's what you need to get in there um is you need to get in and from the heart working with your higher self your soul and just um asking for the release of what created that in the first place whether it was um an old agreement that you had for this to take place or whatever it was. And again, as we know, um, nothing really happens to us that we don't, you know, agree on. And anymore, as we are raising in consciousness, the things that begin to happen to us are a part of, of our journey. As, as we, most of us know that that healing journey is a huge part to awakening of, you know, you get a, a dis ease and you begin to work on it and you find the ways, um, you know, to do the, the actual energy work, the healing work with, with consciousness. It just, it, you're already on that path, Valerie, but yeah, yeah, no, Valerie, I, I still think it is, it is the, um, the core reason why that was there in the first place that still needs to be released. And then I, then I feel like from there you're, it's golden, you're healing. Um, so, but yeah, and, and physical tools, again, the, the wisdom wand is definitely one of my all time favorites. So, um, and Valerie, I will be in Fort Collins this weekend. I don't know if you'll be at the Bella Osa holistic fair, but I'll be set up there. So hopefully we'll see you then. Um, all right. Well, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. And uh, like I say, we may not have a 50 questions Friday for a couple of weeks. We'll see how that goes. And otherwise, yeah, just try to take a breath and just be and just be in that space of just being. Um, Anyway, I guess I have nothing else. <laughs> All right, you guys, take care, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>